Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, October 21st uh, Dare County Board of Commissioners meeting. <clears throat> I call the meeting the, to order. And this, at this time, I'd like to call on the Reverend Spotswood Graves for an invocation. Reverend? Good to see you, Reverend. Good evening. Thank you. Let us bow in prayer. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, to whom the faithful of every nation praise, praise and honor we bring to you. We laud your creativity, giving to each of us a distinctive life with its joys challenged challenges, and opportunity to be neighbor to others. Thank you for the United States of America with its constitution and the challenge of working together to govern ourselves and make life better for each who lives here. Thank you for our defenders on sea and land and for persistent voices who have called us to be more than we presently are. For those who called for women to vote, who removed land owning as a qualification to vote. Thank you for regular elections and the free flow of ideas, for truth that persists even when ridiculed and threatened. Help us to see clearly the dangers in which we presently stand, guided by hopes more than by fears. We lift up councils of government, such as our county commissioners. We thank you for their willingness to serve and willingness to make hard decisions, even unpopular ones. Give them clear consciences and the ability to speak for those whom no one else will hear. Help us to know whose voice is a voice of reason. Help us to see our time of office, even our earthly lives, as part of your overall plan for your creation, that all of creation live without want or fear. We pray for the personal safety of our president, of our governor, of our, county, of our chairman of county commissioners and for all who seek to serve us. We lift up the needs of those in pain, in grief, in want, and in sorrow. We praise you that you know the yearnings of every human heart and that you intercede for all. This is our prayer. Amen. 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 May we stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> County manager? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, item one on the agenda is the chairman's opening remarks. Thank you, county manager. <clears throat> You'll bear with me just for a few moments this evening. I've got a number of things I'd like to uh, address. Um, on um, October the 7th, Monday, and October the 8th, Tuesday, um, the vice chairman, myself, the county manager, Commissioner Ross, Commissioner Bateman, Commissioner House, uh, we traveled to Raleigh. Uh, for an essential housing conference. And uh, it was um, an informative two days, and I, th I feel like that uh, we've gotten some, uh, we made some very good contacts uh, for those two days that we were there. This board is committed to address essential housing, as, as you very well know, and we're working diligently to uh, try to bring something to fruition and hopefully to uh, in 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 the, uh, in the coming months, so there's more to more on that. Uh, 
we, um, as I said, we're committed to, to um, trying to do something uh, concerning essential housing, and I appreciate the board, all the board that uh, is in involved in that. This whole board is committed to uh, certainly making something happen sooner rather than later. On the following Monday, <clears throat> the vice chairman and the uh, county manager and myself uh, took a, a trip to um, Hatteras Island to uh, uh, check out the, the storm debris situation. I know that our public uh, works facility, uh, Shana Fulmer, has been on top of this, working very, very diligently with our debris contractor, trying to uh, uh, get this, uh, these materials picked up as, as quickly as possible. So um, we went down and spent the day and overlooked that. And uh, it was um, very informative. We watched, uh, watched our debris contractor to um, see how much work they were doing and see if there's anything we could do to um, uh, certainly uh, make that even smoother and, and uh, that uh, uh, take, take place uh, quicker uh, rather than later. On uh, uh, Tuesday the 15th, I had a trustee meeting uh, with, with the um, uh, College of the Albemarle. I serve on that board as a trustee. I've got some phenomenal uh, statistics to share with you this evening. Uh, just last year alone, more than $350,000 was awarded to scholarships to students in the COA 7 County service area. The average cost for tuition per credit <coughs> hour runs about $76. In 2018-19, uh, there were monies, uh, those monies were awarded to 103, uh, there are 103 scholarships, excuse me, that was awarded. And of those, 224 students received uh, scholarships averaging about $1,616. So as we continue to uh, move in our direction of a new facility uh, here on uh, Roanoke Island, it's encouraging to see uh, how much uh, scholarship funds is available for our graduating seniors. And, and um, I, en I encourage you to continue to follow the, the action of this board in our direction because we're, we're excited to about what we're doing for our children in, in Dare County. I understand yesterday, obviously, was the, uh, uh, excuse me, Saturday was the uh, uh, Outer Bank Seafood Festival and all, all that I've heard uh, that, that once again was a very successful event. It's become a, um, a great fall outing on the Outer Banks and I commend the, um, 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 the, um, the, um, Shoot, chamber, thank you. <laughs> I can commend the chamber for putting that uh, on each year, and uh, I hope those will certainly continue in the future. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, I have a meeting here. We have a guest speaker coming in, uh, uh, excuse me, tomorrow evening, and then I'll have a, a, a meeting on Wednesday uh, with uh, Michelle Flynn Osborne, who is... Um, uh, the Chief Deputy Commissioner of North Carolina Department of Insurance. She'll be here tomorrow evening at First Flight High School at 6 p.m. So if you're available, please attend. Uh, she's going to talk about property insurance, and uh, I'm sure that uh, she will um, certainly uh, have some good things to uh, say or some information to bring, bring to us uh, tomorrow evening. And then uh, Wednesday morning, I will have a one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting uh, to ex express some of our uh, concerns that we have here in Dare County concerning uh, our insurance and insurance rates. So um, if you have time tomorrow evening, I, I hope that uh, uh, you can make that at uh, First Flight High School. Um, one of the key <coughs> factors I mentioned earlier going down, uh, the, the uh, uh, county manager, myself, uh, the vice chairman, uh, when we went down, there was some concerns about the length of time that it had taken, you know, to, to uh, pick up storm debris. Most of you are aware that Dorian uh, landed uh, or crossed over, I should say, 
uh, Hatteras Island on September the 6th at 8.35 a.m. Um, we had our debris contractor um, start picking up on September the 23rd. That's a Monday. That's 17 days. Usually we give our citizens at least two weeks that have had damage to their homes and debris at least two weeks to pick up. Well, we started picking up 17 days after the storm. Um, and it's remarkable to date, as of, um, as of yesterday, the vegetation debris that has been picked up was 1,165 loads hauled. And this is in unincorporated dare. That's 61,416 cubic yards of material. C and D debris, there was 549 loads hauled. That was 29,326 cubic yards. Um, there were 149 leaning trees that were cut. There were 1,264 hanging limbs that were knocked out of the way or, or brought back out of the way. As of yesterday, Collington, outside the gate, um, uh, only has debris left with white goods, and uh, we're hoping to get that finished this week. Manio, outside the uh, <coughs> uh, town limits, uh, this is the last big area that needs to be uh, completed for, for vegetation and CD materials. And, uh, and that's on uh, highway, uh, six, on the main highway. Uh, we should um, have finished picking up that material late this afternoon. Um, Mans Harbor, vegetation and CD should be completed once again. That was supposed to be completed late this afternoon. Um, with the exception, and I may be pronouncing this, uh, uh, is it pronounced Manchu, Manchu Road? Manchu Road. Yeah. Manchu. Um, uh, they have been completely underwater, so we're waiting in order to be able to get in there to finish that pickup. Uh, East Lake, we will finish that hopefully by the end of tomorrow afternoon. Um, and then Stumpy Point, We've completed uh, uh, all the uh, vegetation and CD materials. <laughs> With respects to Harris Island, um, Roanoke Wave, Salvo, Avon, Buxton, uh, vegetation and CD should be completed and picked up. White goods are uh, certainly collected and, and it's been started and will continue until it's completed. Hopefully we'll have that done uh, certainly by the uh, end of the week. Frisco. Uh, all the uh, vegetation and CD uh, will be picked up by the end of today, hopefully. That's what they were shooting for. And then Hatteras, uh, once again, uh, all the materials uh, hopefully would have been picked up by the end of the day. Um, the marsh grass that you've seen on uh, Highway 12 between Avon and Buxton has been picked up. And we're targeted to have everything um, off the Roanoke Island area about the 31st of, uh, of this month. And um, all of this, uh, all of these numbers that I mentioned to you earlier was unincorporated there through Saturday. So for those that um, uh, want to um, maybe criticize the length of time it's taken to pick up materials, our, um, our uh, public Works Department has worked very, very diligently to make this happen and to have been able to uh, get our uh, debris contractor to move within 17 days of the storm is unparalleled compared to the past where we've had to wait months on end. So I commend our staff and our people for pushing hard into making these things happen and to pick up this storm debris. Um, I believe uh, we have some photos I'd like to share with you. Uh, if you'll take a look at this, uh, that, is, that is the material, uh, and that was over a week ago. Oh, in fact, that was on the 14th 
of, of this month uh, when the uh, uh, vice chairman and myself and uh, the county manager went to the Park Service site where the, we're uh, hauling this material uh, and dumping for, for tractor trailers to come in and haul this up. That's part of the uh, 61,416 cubic yards of material. And that's just one pile. It goes for blocks on in uh, where our debris contractor's been uh, picking that material up. Um, and then last but not least, uh, I would like to uh, inform the public that the annual state of the county will take place on January the 15th <coughs> at 8 a.m. at Captain George's Restaurant. Uh, it'll be uh, the county state of the uh, uh, county uh, on April, I mean on January 15th, 8 a.m., Captain George's. And it will be the kickoff of our 150th anniversary. So stay tuned. We got a lot planned in 2020. And um, uh, we've already started working on the State of the Union. Um, myself and uh, along with the Public Information Office. And I'm excited to uh, look forward to uh, presenting that this coming uh, January. So stay tuned. Put that on your calendars. We're excited to uh, share some good things with you. County Manager, that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That brings us to item two on the agenda, and that's public comment. Ladies and gentlemen, now's the time that's been set aside for public comment. If you have public comment this evening and you've not signed up, uh, raise your hand. I'll recognize you. When I do come to the podium, state your name and where you're from. Please limit your comments to five minutes. The green light will come on when your time begins. The yellow light will come on when you have about a minute left, and the red light will come on when you need to conclude your remarks. On the sign-up sheet, first I have Sherrod Shuler. I'm sorry, I missed his name. Sherrod. Sherrod Shuler. Welcome, Mr. Shuler. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Sherrod Shuler. Shuler. U.S. Small Business Administration Office of Disaster Assistance. First off, thank you for the opportunity today to share with you uh, today. I am representative of the U.S. Small Business Administration as I mentioned, Office of, Office of Disaster Assistance. It is at this time that we are here in the area, here in Dare County, as we're providing assistance to those that were impacted by Hurricane Dorian. Uh, we are here located in Buxton. Uh, we have a location there, that location where we have some representatives uh, from the Small Business um, Administration at the old PNC Bank. That address is 47013. Buxton Back Road in Buxton, North Carolina. The hours of operations for this location is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and we are also available on Saturdays from 10 to 2. We want to share that this office, as it states now, will be open to October 31st, and we're here to assist those that have been impacted. First off, many people may not realize what we do for homeowners, as well as what we do for business owners at, in times of, of disaster. For normally throughout the year, of course, Small Business Administration assists small businesses with their businesses. But during times of office, of, uh, during times of disaster, we also help homeowners and renters. And I want to stress that because of our title, many times it confuses uh, individuals when they are told that they have to apply for assistance through the Small Business Administration. So we are here during this time, through this declaration, to provide assistance to homeowners. We have rates um, as low as 1.7%. 5% for homeowners. For our businesses, those rates are as low as 4%. And for nonprofit organizations, the rates is as low as 2.75%. Now, these loans uh, can go as long as 30 years. No one has to take out a loan for 30 years if they don't choose to, but they do have that option to provide affordable payments for those um, that are been impacted by storms. Now, of course, uh, the money and this resource is used uh, not to replace the insurance money that you've already received for uh, damages, but it is for those uninsured damages, or if you were not insured during that time, um, we provide these loans to assist those um, that have had major damage. 
I want to emphasize for homeowners, uh, many for this particular declaration, we stress that if you're asked to apply or if you feel that you need resources, we ask you to apply with the Small Business Administration. If for any reason you are turned down, we will refer you back to, uh, to the state, um, it looks like there is opportunity or potential opportunity through the North Carolina Emergency Management op um, resources. But in many cases, it requires uh, homeowners and renters to apply first for the Small Business Administration loan. And so again, we don't want you to be frightened by that. We want you to apply, see what opportunities are available to you. If for any reason it does not work out or you're denied, again, we're going to refer you back. Uh, to the North Carolina Emergency Management Group. With that being said, um, we do have the location here to assist those that have been impacted, but there are actually three ways that individuals can apply. So you don't necessarily have to go to the location if you can't make it to the location. You can apply online. That website is sba.gov forward slash disaster or you can call us at 1-800-659-2955. So you have three ways to apply. You can apply with us in person at the location that I mentioned um, in the beginning, <coughs> and you feel free to apply with those there that can assist you through the process. They can answer questions for you. They can um, pretty much answer any questions that you may have if you show up on, uh, on site. That same applies for if you call over the phone through the 800 number, they'll be able to answer those questions. But again, there's also options to apply through our website. At this time, um, for the most part, that is, uh, there is a deadline for applying. That is December 16th for physical damage. And for those businesses that were impacted, uh, maybe they weren't physically impacted, but they had business that uh, slowed down during that period, that deadline is that July 16th, and that is called an economic injury loan. And we could discuss that with you if there were any businesses that were impacted um, in result of the storm. Um, maybe they didn't have business for a few days or weeks because of, as a result of the storm. At this time, is there any questions? Anyone, any questions of Mr. Shul? Good info. Good. Yeah, that, that's really good info. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Great info. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yep. Thank you. Really appreciate you coming and sharing that with us. We appreciate you having us. Thank you. Next is Manny Medeiros. Welcome this evening, Manny. Well, good evening, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I come again this evening uh, to thank you for the opportunity uh, to bring an extremely important matter to your attention, even at some risk of becoming your favorite pest. <laughs> <laughs> I come here in no small measure because of the heading on every meeting agenda that I receive. It says, how will these decisions impact our children and our families? And earlier tonight, you mentioned something else about the children. Now, you will recall I was here in early June, again in early September, to make you aware of an untenable uh, situation that would surely outrage and alert public were it to become commonly known. In short, Dare County is suffering the effects of school administration that, in part, appears to be effectively degrading and undermining rather than enhancing the education of students. Specifically, I've criticized an ineffectual school board infatuation with time-consuming pursuit of issues such as, and I'm not going to go through the whole list, but creating global thinking, uh, creation of nonprofits, social media analytics, blended face-to-face -face and online models, student empathy interviews. Instead of pursuing all these parasitic, trendy aspirations, I would have expected uh, the latest program, DARE 2023, to encourage and engender more meaningful pursuits, such as curiosity and questioning and skepticism and dissenting opinions 
and critical thinking and mastery of language, both oral and written, and other similar topics geared toward academic excellence, but not found in DARE 2023, the school board's glittering gift of mediocrity. Clearly, the school board appears to be impressed with misguided investment and questionable social issues uh, rather than academic achievement. Simply stated, it appears that the funding provided by taxpayers, all of us, does not effectively follow the students to their classrooms, but instead feeds a misguided educational hierarchy or bureaucracy because the, uh, the effect has become virtually autonomous. And here's the, here's the sticky part. I say autonomous because the word on the street relative to school board matters, including effective oversight, uh, is that this, the commissioners have become emasculated uh, relative to uh, oversight and have simply buck, buckled in deference to self-proclaimed experts perhaps in fear of being labeled as reactionary or anti-education, a fear that I understand is quite common. It's not uncommon with regard to public school boards elsewhere. And on compounding this unfortunate uh, view, parents and students continue to be indoctrinated by television and newspaper misinformation. Specifically, parents are exposed to demonstrably false statements uh, concerning climate change and energy production, making obvious the fact that such writers have learned little concerning the subjects about which they claim to care a lot. However, this is a topic for another venue. So let me finish here. I recognize the heavy, heavy responsibilities you commissioners have concerning very serious Dare County uh, matters. But as a many decades county taxpayer, I suspect you may be failing to provide sufficient oversight of school funding. And finally, I belong to no political body uh, and aspire to no elected or appointed office. But being a many decades resident, I respectfully request of you that at least one of you uh, take a more active role in school board oversight rather than simply providing what appears to be customary, ineffective deference to so-called experts. And with that, I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Manny. Any other public comment this evening? Anybody else here for public comment? Any public comment from Buxton? Yes, I have one speaker, Grace Hallenbeck. Welcome. Good evening. Hey, thank you. Good evening. Hope everybody's well. I have um, one suggestion or an idea. There's been a lot of chatter about, although I haven't seen it because I've been stuck in Buxton and have a low riding car so I don't go out when the water's up. I understand that while the bridge um, or, or, or uh, part of the 12 was closed during much of this time after the hurricane, um, there were lines of people who had uh, their time was up in their rentals. And I understand, if the uh, chatter's correct, that the roads were just jammed and people were waiting in line for days, I think. So here's my suggestion. The money you're getting from FEMA, or the money available from FEMA, is uh, available for community and public buildings and, and uses, but there's also mitigation money. And if you could take some of that mitigation money and buy a bunch of cots, and you'd have to, now the Pheasanton Center is a community building, the one in the Tri Villages and the one in Hatteras, I believe, are privately owned, but you could work out the details. If people are forced out of their rentals, rather than clogging up the streets, put them on a cot in one of the three community centers. It's overnight, there are bathrooms, they won't have to pee and poop in people's yards as they had been 
doing, at least they've been saying that. Um, and you wouldn't have to accommodate with uh, by building a building or at any uh, more expensive. It would be a, a very cost-saving measure. You could store those cots in the Pheasant Inn Center. You could, you know, buy a hundred for each building, and um, I think that would that would serve well as an, an emergency shelter. People would have to be out, say, the next day. If it was still flooded, they go out during the day, just like at a um, what, what do you call those places you go to camp? A hostel. You have to leave during the day. You can come back at night, and they've got the fil the facilities they need for, for warmth and shelter and um, <coughs> for bathrooms. So that's my idea. Another, uh, um, let me just mention one other thing. It's unrelated. I think last year I was speaking here, and I asked about a, um, a public boat ramp. Has there... I just, I guess I wanted to put it in your brains again uh, and wonder if you had um, thought about it for uh, the folks on Hatteras Island to have a place to launch their boats. So are there any questions on any of the two items? No, ma'am, but I will respond to you as chair. Um, I must admit the first one is something unique, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. And um, we'll take that under uh, advisement. The second issue is, the, as far as the boat ramp, we have certainly looked into that numerous times. We're still struggling to find somewhere where we could do that, but we, it, it has not gone on deaf ears. We have looked at uh, several locations uh, on, on the island to see if we could create uh, a boat ramp. And we'll continue to study options there. So thank, thank you. you very with, much for your comments this evening. Oh, you're well. You're welcome. You know, um, with the um, using the community centers, as far as cost effective, I think that of course you would work out the logistics and the budgetary needs, but um, you might be able to get away with perhaps a sheriff's deputy at each place and an employee from the Pheasant Inn Center just to be on staff. You know that time because you you could just open the doors and have no supervision at all. So. I hope you'll consider that. I, I think that it, it could be a, a very uh, worthwhile thing. It doesn't happen often. So, um, you know, you don't need to build a, a hotel when you only need it once every so many years. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Good night. No further comment from Buxton. With that, Mr. Chairman, we close the public comment. Um, that brings us, so yeah, we're good. That brings us to item three on the agenda. This is a public hearing on the proposed text amendment to C3 Commercial Zoning District uh, to allow storage. Um, if anyone here tonight would like to speak to that issue, uh, please raise your hand. When you do, I'll recognize you. Please then come to the podium. Um, the rules that we just spoke of apply here as well. Um, and with that said, we have one person signed up. Is it Matt Schumuck? Close to Schmook. Schmook, okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Matt. Thank uh, you for being here. My name is Matthew Schmook. I am the general manager for Jump Masters Trampoline Park. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Carter Lumber of the South and Jump Masters Park. Uh, we support the text amendment to allow commercial storage for the C3 district. Uh, we believe the change would meet a need for the area to secure safe and uh, secure storage for not only visitors, but also for our locals. Uh, thank you for considering this and uh, we hope that you will pass those amendments. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Any other public comment on this issue? Any comment from Buxton? No comment from Buxton. Hearing none, we would close the public hearing. And Noah, if you would tell the board and the people looking what this is about and what the recommendations are. Uh, Mr. Brenton Johnson um, applied for a tax amendment to the C3 Commercial District. Um, the district applies to portions of Roanoke Island, Avon, and Buxton. Mr. Johnson is seeking the addition of commercial storage yards to the list of uses offered in the area of zone C3. The Dare County Zoning Ordinance defines commercial storage yards as follows, an open site that provides space for a fee 
for the storage of boats and boat trailers, recreational vehicles, travel trailers and campers, automobiles, utility trailers, contractors, towable storage trailers, and similar types of vehicles and equipment. This does not include the dry stack storage of boats. Um, current permitted uses in C3 already allow for uses that are more intensive, including boat and engine repair and the maintenance and vehicle storage impoundment facilities. Um, the board, the planning board um, recommended approval. I've included with the packet to, um, a draft motion of approval. Uh, if it is so, the board's decision to approve. Okay, thank you. Any questions? What, what is the pleasure of the board? A motion to approve. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by Commissioner Tobin to approve the text amendment to C3 Commercial Zone District. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, that motion needs to include and a finding of consistency is also adopted as a part of this motion. And this consistency statement shall be a part of the public record. And that's what I heard, Mr. <laughs> Chair, uh, Commissioner Tobin say. <laughs> that was precisely Thank what I pre said. Precisely, yeah, well precisely what he said. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by the Vice Chair. The floor is open for further discussion. Hearing none, those in favor of the, that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Likewise. <laughs> motion carries unanimous. Item four is from the Capital Improvements Committee. Uh, the CIPC met this afternoon. We looked at um, three construction management at risk companies to uh, consider for the construction of our COA campus. Um, we had three good submissions. Um, two of them we were working back and forth on. Uh, uh, Whiting Turner has done a lot of work for us, and, and they were one of the ones that submitted, as was um, Barnhill Construction, who we haven't worked with, but they made an excellent presentation. Uh, they do a lot of work uh, east of I-95. They do a lot of work on projects that are uh, schools and, and academic projects, and they do a lot of work with the subcontractors and groups that are going to have to work on this project from eastern North Carolina. Uh, we ran into a problem with our uh, animal shelter project trying to find subcontractors from Virginia and, and they had to move down to look for North Carolina. Uh, Barnhill already has those relationships and with those things said the Capital Improvement Committee was unanimous to recommend to you all that we select Barnhill Construction to be our capital, our construction management at risk uh, partner for, for these projects. Um, I don't know if anybody from the CIP would like to say anything, but that's the recommendation of the committee. I will um, <coughs> I will yield to the vice chair or Commissioner Ross if they'd like to make any comment with respect to the CIP meeting. Uh, I think, I'll, I'll just say this, uh, I think uh, Barnhill's uh, experience, particularly in working with uh, uh, higher education buildings, uh, will, will go a long way toward helping us, plus the fact uh, the use of the very latest technology uh, in construction uh, in terms of uh, design and, and build is is a really uh, is a really positive thing with them. Uh, I mean, we were also faced with a situation where you couldn't make a bad choice uh, between the two uh, primary contenders for this. So um, it, it's uh, it's I, I think it's sort of a, a sort of a no brainer, really. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Commissioner Ross, any comment? Yeah, we actually did have three qualities. Uh, the two, uh, Whiting Turner and Barnhill, stood out in terms of their size, scope, reach, experience. Uh, Barnhill, especially with regard to construction management at risk contracts. Uh, a third firm, Sussex Development, was also uh, very good, did a nice job. And, uh, you know, there were no negatives there at all. It was more or less all three appeared to be quite qualified, and it's just that in this point in time, for me, what came across was the ability to not only bid to, but then attract and retain the subcontractors necessary at a fair rate in Eastern North Carolina to do this job, because it apparently is a tough market to get quality subs that will not only bid the job, but then do it in a manner that's appropriate on we used to have a saying in IT you could have there's three things on time on budget and full functionality pick two 
Because you're never going to get three. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, if I showed you the permanent scars and bruises on my head from fighting that battle, sorry, Matt Hester, that's your area. <laughs> but these guys seem to be very well qualified and, and presented themselves extraordinarily well so that I have high confidence that we will get a quality group of subs and a quality general to get the uh, COA building done as, you know, we would expect it to be done. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I do have, uh, I want to refer to our county attorney. Um, this first time hearing that Barnhill Construction was involved with this. And uh, I want to just broach the, the, the text that I am very good friends with the Barnhills and knew nothing about this and asking the county attorney, county manager, should I abstain from voting do because you, of that relationship? Do you receive any personal benefit by virtue of your vote? No. Then you should vote. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion uh, from the CIP committee to uh, recommend um, um, choosing Barnhill contracting um, for this project? Move to recommend Barnhill. <clears throat> There's a motion by the vice chair uh, to do so. Is there a second? Second. It's seconded by Commissioner Ross. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign? <laughs> motion carries unanimous. See where that brings Barnhill us to the trade. consent agenda? Here. Here. On the consent agenda, you have the approval Choice. of the minutes. You have the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program Local Government Resolution. The tax collector's report, the schedule of meeting dates for 2020, open ended <coughs> application agreements for online payment services for tax and water, and a request for addition to state maintained secondary road system at Caribbean Way. On item five on there, the, the open edge application, I'm working with Sally to make a change in the signature line from what you have in there. There's a personal guarantee to the person who signs, Mr. Chairman, and I didn't think... Well, I, I don't know that I signed anything. You need to personally guarantee it, so we're trying to get that changed. Yeah, you need to change that. Uh, <laughs> with that change... You, you can't sure, change it quick enough. It is, sure it is as it's before you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve by uh, Commissioner Bateman, seconded by Commissioner Tobin. And thank you, Bob, for that personal guarantee. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Motion carries unanimous. Um, next you have your board appointments. Um, you have the Veterans Advisory Council. Uh, Norm St. Lawrence has resigned. You have applications on file from George Berry, Kenneth Picantis, Walton Berkheimer, uh, Michael Keating, William J. Overman, and Barry Holt. The council recommends that you appoint Barry Holt. Pleasure of the board. Move to recommend the appointment of Barry Holt. Okay, there's a motion to uh, approve Barry Holt by Commissioner House. There's a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Ross. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign? <coughs> Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is the Dare County Center Advisory Board. Paul Oliver has resigned. Applications on file for um, Stephanie J. Harkness, Harkness Moxley and Emily Hall. The advisory board recommends Emily Hall be appointed to complete the remaining term. Pleasure of the board. Motion to appoint Emily Hall to the Dare County Center Advisory Board. There's a motion by Commissioner Tobin to appoint Emily Hall to the Dare County Center Advisory Board. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Motion carries unanimous. And then last is the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. Bonnie Bennett and Richard Martin have retired. You have applications on file from Shannon Glasser. Todd Hanichi, Amber Jennings, Shannon Brooks, Lynette Ford, and Alan Moran. The council recommends Shannon Glazer be appointed to replace Bonnie Bennett <coughs> and Todd Hanichi be appointed to replace Richard Martin. Pleasure of the board. Move to appoint uh, Sharon Glees and Todd Hanichi. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner House. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Commissioner Ross and Vice Chair. Oh, excuse me, Tobin. Yes. Sir. Sorry about that. <laughs> Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign? 
Motion carries unanimous. <laughs> That'd be your agenda, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, County Manager. That brings us to uh, item seven, Commissioner's Business and Manager's Business. Uh, Commissioner House, do you mind kicking it off tonight? Sure, I'll be short, short and sweet. Uh, not a whole lot's been going on the past couple of weeks. Uh, there is some fishing stuff that's uh, coming down the pipes and which I will have a lot more information on at our next meeting. Um, one of the thing, things that I like to do is also a day in history. I thought this was, this was kind of interesting. In 1879, after four, 14 months of testing, Thomas Edison first demonstrated his electric st street lamp, hoping to one day compete with gas lights. I think he was successful. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, we do have a pet of the week, who is Sadie. She is a nine-year-old mixed lab, sweet senior dog, surrendered by her owner who could no longer take care of her. So she is definitely looking for a new home. Our pet of the week for this week is Sadie. This distinguished lady is a nine-year-old lab mix who was recently surrendered to the shelter when her owner became too ill to care for her. She's a super sweet senior who would love a comfy home for lots of rest and relaxation. To adopt Sadie or foster one of her other animals, you can come and visit us Monday through Saturday at our shelter located in Manio. Join us this Friday night at Pups and Pints in Buxton at the Inn on Pamlico Sound. Their cafe Pamlico on the back deck has the perfect view of the sound with stellar sunsets. Bring your pup and have a pint with us. And October 29th is our last <laughs> Tail Wagon Tuesday Halloween edition at Pigman's Barbecue. For more information, visit our website at www.obxspca.org or visit our OBXSPCA Facebook page. Please do what you can. See if Sadie, Sadie de definitely needs a new home. She's a very loving, loving dog. And uh, you don't have to worry about all the puffy chewing and stuff like that from the lab because she's already over that part. Um, but if Sadie is not a good, you don't think would be a good fit for you, please visit SBCA. There's plenty of, of uh, potential pets out there for you to take a look at and hopefully take one home. Pets need a home just as much as we do. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner House. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just like to mention, uh, you brought up the Seafood Festival earlier. I was uh, happy to uh, give a little welcoming uh, talk out there the other day about noontime. And at noon, uh, the the uh, the place was absolutely packed, and there was still a line waiting to come in. Uh, hadn't got the numbers yet on uh, how many people attended, but it was uh, very, very well attended. Uh, it seemed like the, the folks serving food were doing a Good job. There were some some lines, but they weren't as long as they've been in past years, and looked like they were really moving the folks through there. But it was uh, quite nice. Had a lot of uh, had a lot of booze, a lot of tents up with folks uh, uh, sharing things, a lot of crafts and and uh, and things like that. Uh, so I'm, I think the numbers are going to be uh, really really good. And and what a day to be in Dare County. It was uh, it was absolutely a, a beautiful day. day. It really was. So thank you. Gorgeous day. Thank you, Vice Chair. Commissioner Bate. Yes, sir. Um, to tailgate off, uh, Vice Chairman Overman, um, we were not able to be at the festival because we had conflicting caterings. But talking to my restaurant buddies, they said they rocked it. A lot of people there, a lot of good food. A lot of um, the crowds were enormous. I rode by there one time coming back from our gig, and um, people walking up and down the streets, and there was a lot of people there. Yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger. Every yeah, day. it is, and it's just a great event. Um, anyway, congratulations to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, I, I had an opportunity to um, go down south and was coming back through um, Hatteras and Buxton, as you were the same day. And um, Public Works has done a great job, as well as the contractor, as you said, cleaning up. And I'd been down there two weeks prior to that, and the difference between the two weeks, it was just crazy. They really done an outstanding job. Um, it, was, it looked really, really good. There's a couple of areas that they were still working on, but you could tell that they were just nailing it. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Couch? Yeah, I'll back up. Uh, the Vice Chairman and also Commissioner Bateman uh, uh, came by Seafood Festival, and I was amazed at uh, with, with that mass of people how well organized it was. Uh, law enforcement, uh, where cars were passing through orderly, uh, uh, taking some time to look over in there with uh, some of the lines. I mean, when you have that many people, <laughs> you're going to have lines. But 
everybody's attitude looked to be really good. The weather was good. Uh, I think that brings a lot of recognition to us, uh, obviously, by the amount of people that were attending there. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, for those uh, stats on the debris removal. Each one of those trucks holds uh, about 81 yards. So to be up uh, over 65,000 yards of debris, the, the biggest truck out there holds 85. And uh, they are just moving despite the obstacles that you have because, uh, let's face it, people being people, there is some abuse that goes on. But these guys, they don't sweat it. And they're getting it done. And uh, it's an absolutely phenomenal, when this is all said and done, uh, because Dorian was, Dorian was a, was a hoss. Uh, when it's all said and done, I think we'll look back at this and, uh, number one, learn, again, some more lessons about how to handle storm management. But, you know, these guys, uh, but also, number two, just the fact that we, we should be proud of, of our uh, emergency management and, of course, our public works. I, I've been down with Shanna and uh, Mr. Huff, Doug Huff, and uh, riding around, checking things out, and doing the punch list stuff. Uh, people are stopping and talking to us, and just really, I'm, I'm glad to see it uh, and the success that it is. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Tobin. Okay, um, I attended the Dare County Older Adult Services Board meeting, and uh, happy to report that uh, just fantastic programs going on at the Dare Center, the Bomb Center, and the Pheasanton Center. Uh, and one of the things that's coming up this week at, at the D.A.R.E. Center is the D.A.R.E. to Scare 5K. Uh, that's Saturday, October 26th. So if you feel like having a fun run, go out and, and uh, join in the fun on that. Um, also, uh, quick report on dredging. Uh, the core is dredging the Wanchies Channel when the when the tides aren't right at the inlet, uh, they're trying to dredge west of the bridge. There's a hump in there. They're there working pretty much the slack tides, but when the when the tides start rolling heavier, they, they're coming back and working on the Wanchies Channel. Um, other than that, just kind of one of my fun little points tonight, Earth will travel through the Ornoid Meteor Shower, which is the remnants of Haley's Comet's tail. So it's kind of, that's kind of a cool thing. We, Haley's comment, Comet's not around, but uh, the tail remnants are. <laughs> so unfortunately, it's cloudy tonight, but if it clears up, it'll be a pretty good sight. That's all I got. Thank you, Commissioner Tobin. Commissioner Ross. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As is my custom, all things golf happen to hit my calendar. <laughs> Just want to give a shout out to Mike Kelly and the work he does Every year at this time, today was his annual charity golf tournament. Mike puts a lot of his own money, time, and effort into this. It was held at Nags Head Golf Links, and I know they always have a big turnout, and I just wanted to wish them the best and hope, indeed, they raise a lot of money for the charities that they support through this annual event. Do you play? Yeah, that's why I was in a CIPC <laughs> meeting today. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how important the CIPC that's meeting right. is. I skipped the golf tournament. Well, if, you hit a, if you hit a hole in one on all 18, it won't take you long to go through it. No, so. that's true. That is a quick <laughs> way to motor through that tournament. Uh, I just want to point out on the 28th and the 29th, Vice Chairman Overman, County Manager, out, and I will be in uh, Chapel Hill and Raleigh following up with meetings regarding essential housing that came and stemmed out of our trip to Raleigh recently for the housing conference, continuing to pursue and drive this issue for concrete solutions for the various communities in our county that are seeking uh, essential housing that is appropriate for the need. And uh, lastly, uh, just a quick reminder, there will be on the 14th, I think we've already called this out, the legislative breakfast, which will be an update from Senator Seinberg and Representative Hennig regarding legislative activities in our region. That's at the Hilton Garden Inn on November 14th uh, at breakfast. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Ross. <clears throat> County Manager. I don't have anything. Mr. Don't have anything. Um, Dorothy, our public information officer, do you have anything for us this evening? One reminder for those who live in towns, the early voting is going on for the November 5th municipal, so encourage anyone. I voted today. Great. Here and in Kill Devil Hills, I believe it's 8 to 5. 
Monday through <coughs> Friday, through next Friday. So. Good deal. Thank you. Finance Director, Dave, you have anything for us this evening? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. That brings us to a motion to adjourn until 9 a.m. on November the 4th. Is there a motion to do so? Moved. Motion by Commissioner House. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.